This is Beyond a Reasonable Doubt with your hosts, Mark Garrigus and Gary Smith. Mark, Welcome to BRD. Boy, I'll tell you, the um, I, I missed you guys. We miss you too, Mark. And I, I got I to gotta tell you, you know, certainly for the big show, but even for beyond, there are some weeks where I'm a little nervous. You know, there's just a slow week, uh, the, you know, there's two or three stories. And if, if they don't like them or they get through them too fast, I'm going to be in trouble. Not today. Not today, Not boy. Tomorrow. I mean, it's I Brett had a uh, Brett had a very our researcher Brett extraordinary. He had a, the line about uh, other than you know that Mrs. Lincoln. How did you enjoy the play? Because yeah. uh, given what's happening in the world and uh, and uh, with Russia and Ukraine and and NATO and uh, the uh, the response or lack of a response. I mean, it's it's astonishing. You know, there's um. As an Armenian, I'll start off with this. There are so many cross currents of what's going on. Um, and I saw some people were tweeting today that if you're an Armenian, um, this also has kind of a, it resonates because of the 44 day war in Artsakh and um, where Azerbaijan was supported by Turkey and and Israeli um, uh, weapons. But their third weapon supplier was none other than Ukraine, um, which is interesting. And the Azerbaijanis have um, have uh, uh, used Ukraine as a training or staging area for much of their military. Uh, and then I saw, although the Russians are saying it's just a coincidence, that Aliyev, who is the dictator thug uh, head of Azerbaijan, just signed a um, an agreement, an alignment agreement with Putin the day before the uh, invasion, which is an interesting geopolitical kind of um, chess move, although they claim it's a coincidence. I, I don't buy that for a second that it was done on the day before they went in. Yeah. Um, I think to do in terms of making sure that Azerbaijan, since they have this close connection to the Ukraine, that they would not reciprocate and they would be on board when when this happens. I mean, there's there's so many crosswinds going on um, here. I mean, what's going to happen in Moscow with the protests? What's going to happen in Ukraine? What kind of resistance are you going to have? Are you going to see, because this does have, this? it, it is, kind of a microcosm of what we saw back in 2020. That are you going to see resistance coming from the NATO countries, which border the other side other than Belarus? So, I mean, there's, there's like I said, there's a lot going on, but I digress. And uh, maybe we'll go to the Maxwell case where, sure. um, Gary, you could do the setup because it just happened or just broke. Sure, absolutely. Well, a little refresher for those who may not remember the the juror in the Maxwell case, uh, juror number fifty, who identified himself to media outlets. He was giving interviews to as Scotty David, which appears to be his first and middle name, not his last name. Uh, he told uh, some outlets that he had been a victim of sexual abuse as a child, and that he felt that his telling of his story helped some of the jurors who maybe weren't you know, coming along to the to the verdict that we ended up with fast enough to understand on a more personal level. This is someone they could interact with and, and ask about his story. And uh, it, it turned out that he had apparently uh, answered no on his jury questionnaire, which had the very explicit question. Had it had two, two spots for it. And right. they just really, the, the court just released it where he checked no. And um, and she said it's a high bar. Um, and Judge Nathan did, and um, uh, but that the prosecutors conceded there would have to be a hearing. And so it'll be very interesting to see. Interesting that also next week is the hearing on the jurors in Peterson for a, kind of a similar issue. And in that case, it was announced that um, Ms. Flattiger, who is the DA who actually tried, was on the prosecution team, was now going to give her immunity because she was invoking the fifth. It'll be interesting to see if that presages what's going to happen on the hearing on March 8th in the Maxwell case. And then we also have um, just breaking news that the three officers in federal court on the um, uh, George Floyd uh, murder 
uh, were convicted of a violation of civil rights. And I think to some degree, as we've talked about before, that was, I thought, a surprise. I think Adam and I and you have talked about that we thought that the two younger officers and who did all three have apparently did get up and testify. Yeah. Um, but but this jury convicted all three and they all got the that's a that's going to be quite a uh, sentencing uh, when when that happens as well. Absolutely. In fact, I Mark, I found uh, to your point, we had talked about how those two younger officers, one of whom had been on the force for less than you know two weeks, I believe, uh, we thought that they might be able to uh, to go you know to get past this. And uh, no, as my light fails, uh, they actually were both convicted of an additional charge of not interceding and trying to stop uh, officer. Uh, Sorry, the main officer, Chauvin, whose name was escaping me for a moment. But I, I think it's the, the you know, the, quite a um, quite a quite a surprise, given historically how uh, difficult it is to convict officers in these situations. And um, the uh, the prosecutors in this case, um, obviously, and you couldn't they don't have cameras in the trial courts, in the federal trial courts. So we couldn't watch it as we watched the trial of uh, Chauvin, but I still think it was surprising in a case like this. I agree. And I think that we'll, uh, we'll probably need to talk a little bit more about that on the big show this weekend, because I'm sure Adam will have thoughts given, uh, given our incorrect prediction. Right. Exactly. So we, we always admit when we're wrong. Oh, absolutely. Um, what else you want to cover? We I, there's five or six more here on Brett's list. Uh, right, you right. Know? I'm, I'm going to let you pick the next. It's kind of our like a lightning round. Okay. Uh, well, I think that the one that I sent you yesterday, uh, there are a couple of prosecutors in New York who have resigned from their job, and it's a significant set of resignations. Right. Uh, why don't you tell us why? Uh, well, there's, uh, and you know, I was thinking that I would love to get. Um, um, a view of this from Karen Agnifilo, who works out of our New York office, because up until a year ago, she was in the Manhattan DA's office when Cy Vance was there. Now you've got the newly elected Alvin Bragg, and it clearly these two lawyers were brought in, uh, the ones who resigned, were clearly brought in to in my humble opinion, to um, uh, get, seek an indictment. You don't bring these guys in to decline an indictment and to publicly release it as that they are resigning. I mean, that's how it was characterized. They, yep. they, and doing it in tandem speaks volumes. Uh, so it's, you know, there's been much uh, prior to the events unfolding today um, uh, internationally. There was a lot of chatter yesterday about the message that was sending. And maybe we'll have Karen phone in for five minutes on the big show and give us her take on what's going on. I, I can only imagine what she has to say. I haven't talked to her about it yet. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a good idea. We uh, we've had Karen on before. We should uh, absolutely have her back. Uh, let's see here, Sarah Palin. Uh, in the- now, this is an interesting one. We've talked about this case too. The uh, they appeared. The lawyers appeared. Not only asked that Judge Rakoff be removed. Uh, from the case, but a motion for new trial for those who aren't in the weeds on this. Basically, what happened is he announced at the time that the motion was made that he was going to dismiss the case. The jury was deliberating. A number of the jurors have then said they got push notifications while they were deliberating that he intended to dismiss it. And so they had a very short hearing. And during that short hearing, uh, they asked for a briefing schedule, and I believe got a uh, were granted that. And so we're gonna, there's going to be some, I would imagine, some fireworks there. I would imagine too, depending, you might see some declarations that uh, might find their way into, way into the briefing as exhibits that uh, might be helpful in terms of making the case, making their case. Yeah, absolutely. Uh- I like this one that Brett included uh, out of Michigan, that there is a preliminary hearing. For those who don't remember, there was the case of the school shooting. Uh, the reports came out that the parents had been you know, possibly aware that there was some potential for this and hadn't interceded. The school had punished the the. The, their son previously and uh you know then to talk to the parents and the parents reportedly text him that they were, weren't upset but they were upset that he got caught um so there was a hearing uh to see whether or not they could be held liable uh for 
for the, on, an, uh, on an involuntary manslaughter, as I remember, right? Correct. Thank yeah. you for helping me out there. So, uh, we'll, we'll we'll return to that tomorrow and report on that as well. So we got a we got a pretty good big show going uh, shaping up tomorrow. But uh, who knows what another day will bring? Absolutely, we are uh, we are monitoring the news carefully, and we will see you guys tomorrow with Adam Carolla for the big show. Mark, thank you for your time. See ya. Bye, Gary. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to Beyond a Reasonable Doubt. Stay tuned for more bonus episodes coming soon.